Take your fun full throttle with a single touch. There are places to fly high, swing low, or make the old bell ring. Your targets are in sight. Better your game by playing ball of almost every variety. Need to catch your breath? There's a place for that too. Countless ways to play beyond the swing sets. Breck, we're more than a playground. Hi gang, Clarence Bugs here, inviting you to come by Old School Barbecue, 10655 Corsi Boulevard, where we tape the show live every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 11 o'clock. Come by and feast on news, sports, current events, love of God and country, and lots of common sense, along with some of the best barbecue anywhere on the planet. 10655 Corsi Boulevard, Old School Barbecue, home of the Clarence Bugs Show. Hello guys, it's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Welcome to this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. Clarence Bugs, along with the coach and an assorted cast of characters that uh, you may or may not want to know. Just an observation. Coach, it is uh, that time of year where that magical transition happens. We've got basketball going on. We've got baseball going on, gymnastics going on, all sorts of things. Just, just a smorgasbord. Uh, of activities for college fans. LSU baseball started out the season, real lofty ranking, pushed to, put together a, a, a fairly impressive record. But a lot of folks said, well, we might just need to wait until they play some real competition. So weekend to go, they head to Texas for some significant competition. They went one and two on the weekend too early to worry oh yeah i would worry too much i think they've got a good team they've made some errors and you know mm -hmm. that cost them uh but i really think it's it's early you got to understand this is a new coach he's learning the the t territory yeah he's learning yeah. how things work in this part of the world mm -hmm. and i just think we need to just it doesn't matter right now right Right. It really doesn't matter. It's when you get in the second half of the SEC yeah. is when it really matters. And, he, you know, the SEC is going to be competitive enough where a, a, a stumble here, a stumble there won't do a team in. Right. Because I think teams are going to lose and it'll balance things out. You mentioned the number of errors. Right now, LSU has committed the seventh – most errors in the entire nation in college baseball. That's not a good look, Coach. Not a good look. That's, and that's why they, you know, they don't, lost some games because they didn't hit well. Right. They didn't score runs. Right. Like the Texas game, they didn't score uh -huh. runs. So, But errors contribute to, to, to some other things that mess up the chemistry within mm -hmm. the team situation. Mm -hmm. well, those of us that have followed LSU baseball over the years. We've become accustomed to certain things. They're going to play fundamentally sound baseball. They are going to field well. May have a slump or two at the plate here or there, but 
by and large, they're going to swing a pretty good stick. Now, that being said, when you are number seven in errors, you have the 279th worst fielding uh, percentage in all of college baseball. Forgive some of us, but we may kind of squint a little bit when we think, is this LSU baseball? I mean, number seven in the country in errors, 279th worst fielding percentage. That's not what we're accustomed to seeing. You see, you one of those guys <laughs> who play with numbers. I knew that was coming. You, you play with numbers. <laughs> fielding and errors are the same thing. Uh -huh. You, you uh -huh. play with numbers. Right. So my thing is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Thought you, I could get you, Coach. You, it doesn't matter if they got seven in the nation in errors and then 200 something with fielding. It's right. the same thing. Right. So my whole thing is, let's not complicate it for our listening audience uh -huh. who may not be as astute as you are. Why is the sky blue? Because <laughs> God created it that way. Uh, but uh, I just think that uh, let's give it time. Uh -huh. It just takes time. And we have grown to be so impatient. We want it yesterday, today. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And it doesn't work like that. What what was the old bumper sticker back in the seventies that was that was a uh, real prominent God please give me patience and give it to me right now. Right now. <laughs> right now. <laughs> yeah. So you know, you're not gonna get it that way. Number seven in errors. How do you fix that, coach? Is that more physical or more mental or a little bit of both? Well, it could be athletic or do they have the ability? Mm -hmm. To be good fielders, right? I I, I got to think the kid at second base is a is a hitter and not a fielder. Right. So I, I'm gonna give him. He can make it up with his bat. Right. Uh, but but how do you make it to the LSU level if you can't do those things? Clarence, things ain't the way they used to be. Yeah. They're not like they used to be. You take in one dimensional players. Uh huh. Remember. What you're getting out of the high school rank to a large extent, if a kid can hit, that's what they, they spend mm -hmm. their time on. Yeah. They don't spend their time on feeling. Right. Nobody demands that they do it. But that's one of the basics of the game. How, how do you not? In, because in, they're going to make the money hitting. Not many people make money fielding. Uh -huh. That's where the game is. So they don't spend the time there. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. it takes... You know, it really takes time, and let's face it, you're going to see other teams make errors. Right. They're going to make errors, too. Just give them a chance. Right. We're highlighting LSU because we're talking well, yeah. about LSU. Yeah. After this one and two, one win, two loss weekend, the Tigers fell in the polls and are ranked anywhere from number six in collegiate baseball to number 16 in Baseball America, that wide disparity, is that why you don't put much stock in polls? Because somebody's voting that never seen them play. <laughs> <laughs> Hell with them polls, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what? They, they're good for people to talk about. Right. And they're good for a show like this so we can talk about But they ain't going to win no games. They ain't going to win you any game. They're going to get your feelings hurt. Right. If you fool around and get ranked too high, uh -huh. and someone knock you off. You know, and I watch some of the games – in Texas, in the uh, Mini Maid Dome, and I think LSU has got a relatively good team. Mm -hmm. I think it's taking time. They look like they're going to have enough arms mm -hmm. that they can pitch. And uh, you just got to be patient to see what Coach Johnson is trying to do. Mm -hmm. He's got a game plan. Right. We just we want it all to be laid out in 13 games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and the guy's got a track record that proves he knows what he's doing. And it just take time. A kid walks into your office, big old grin on his face. He's got a newspaper or a magazine in his hand. He's waving it. Coach, you see we're ranked number one. You see we're ranked number one, huh? What do you say to him this time of the season? Little Johnny, let me have this newspaper. <laughs> Roll let it me up read it. <laughs> let me read it. And right. then scratch a match and set it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to do it. Yeah. From, from a coaching standpoint, understanding the age and maturity level 
of the individuals that you're dealing with in collegiate baseball. What's easier to fix, offensive problems or defensive problems? <laughs> They're both a difficulty uh -huh. because if you got shortcoming there, if you're shortcoming as a hitter, right. it's hard to fix that. Right. If you're shortcoming as a fielder, it's even harder to fix that. Mm -hmm. The key is to try and simplify things. Okay. Say, okay, try to make sure you catch all the balls hit right at you. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the ones here. Don't worry about the one there. Right. So you eliminate some pressure uh -huh. of a kid saying, don't I got to ro right. range and make this play and backhand and make this. Eliminate that. Uh -huh. And the thing with the hitter is that it's a little more challenging. You got to say, man, you got to swing at strikes. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing as a hitter. Right. Try to hit strikes. Uh -huh. And then try not to miss the fastball. Right. Well, how do you hit a curveball? Don't miss the fastball. It's the best way to hit a curveball. Yeah. You're yeah. never going to see it if you hit the fastball. Does one cancel out the other? In this, in, in this particular case, more so than the other. Here's what I mean. If you're not that good offensively, you know you're only going to score a certain amount of runs. But if you play good defense, you will hold the other team to fewer runs, which gives you the opportunity to possibly beat them, knowing you're not that good offensively, but you don't have as much to overcome because your defense is so good, you limit the amount of runs the other team scores. Does one carry more weight than the other, being good offensively versus being good defensively? Baseball is the one unique sport uh -huh. out of the three major sports. Right. It is the most unique of them all. Why do I say that? In baseball, in football, basketball, you can play great defense mm -hmm. and carry the ball and you get rewarded right. if you score a touchdown or basketball. Good point. Good point. Great defense in baseball only gets you an out. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So you don't get to score. You got to do it right. on the other side uh -huh. and score. Uh -huh. You see, in those, uh, so that's the scenario you have in baseball. You'd rather be able to score runs at will uh -huh. because defense doesn't score runs for right. you. You can keep the other team from scoring, but periodically you can't, you can't benefit from offense by playing great defense. Right. That so, makes sense? So then is this the one instance where something we've heard as fans over and over and over again, is this the one time that it may not necessarily be true when we say defense, offense sells tickets, and defense. defense wins championships. Not necessarily in baseball. Not in baseball. Because offensive, you got to score. Yeah. You can't score. It's, that's the difference. Uh -huh. Defense doesn't allow you to score any run in baseball. Right. Offensively, you have to. It's, it's like taking that third strike. You can't hit the ball. If you don't swing the bat. That's right. Huh. So, and the other thing about it, Clarence, this is why I say I'd rather have offense uh -huh. because you can score a bunch of runs. Right. And the other team got to score more than you to beat you. Oh, yeah. But yeah. You, you can play just enough defense. Uh -huh. I'm going to give a case in point. Okay. The 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh-huh. I think it was 79. They were not considered a really good defensive team. Okay. They had bad, but they had a great bunch of offensive players. Uh huh. And they won the World Series. Right. They won it because of their offense, uh -huh. not their defense. Uh huh. They only had two people on that defense that you would consider major league caliber defenders. Right. The Mendoza, the uh -huh. Mendoza at shortstop. And Marina in center field. Right. Those were the only two guys you would consider uh -huh. defensive players. Uh -huh. Everybody else was average to below average defenders. Right. But they were great offensive players, and they allowed them to win the championship. So <laughs> that is the reason it doesn't sell that defense win championship in baseball. Right. 
because you got to score runs. I, I guess that there could be a collegiate analogy to that, uh, that Pittsburgh team that you talked about. Uh, a lot of the gorilla ball teams under Skip Bertman weren't necessarily known for sterling defense, although they were pretty sound defensively. Right. But, boy, they could take it out the yard at the drop of a hat. Yeah, and that's the thing. It gave the defense some latitude to make an error or two. Uh-huh. Because they scored so many runs. Yeah, don't worry about it. Don't worry about that drop ball. Don't worry about the pass ball. We're going to make it up. Oh, yeah, and then the pitcher. Don't worry about it. Son, uh-huh. just keep throwing strike. Uh-huh. We'll get them. Yeah. And yeah. that's the kind of stuff that I, I hope that people will understand about baseball. So don't try to take football and basketball and s- st- slide it into the way right. baseball works right. because it doesn't work with doesn't that work. defense win championship. So I guess we now have to say, Offense sells tickets, defense wins championships, unless it's in baseball. Unless it's in baseball. Yep, great lesson. Thank you, Coach. First break of today's show. After that, segment two of the Roger Cato Show. Stay close. Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of African Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid-City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Some Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge. Some don't. The ones that do know BTR is all about being closer, more convenient, with non-stops and short hops to anywhere their business takes them. They also know not flying BTR means more traffic, longer lines, and wasted time. So if it's about going from driveway to runway with a lot less highway, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. It's about time. Caught spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Roger Kador Show. We'll, we'll shift gears here from baseball on the collegiate level to baseball on the professional level. The uh, Major League Baseball lockout continues. Mm-hmm. I know you are, are in regular contact with uh, your sources um, in Major League Baseball. Your thoughts on this lockout continuing? Well, it's really not good, but you know what? I understand both sides. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to pick side because the owners, they want to have more control. Right. The players want more of the revenue. Right. You know, they're, they're looking out for the future uh-huh. of the younger players and everything. So the, the owners haven't opened their book, their book so they could see. Right. There's a reason they're hiding something, players. <laughs> and the history says ownership has never been right by players anyway. Right. They've taken advantage of them. So these guys are fighting to the end. They're going to play. They're getting close. And maybe in the next week or so we may hear Here's something break. If you could sit down in private with just the owners, what would you say to them? Well, I would try to make them see that 
what the players are asking for is not out of line with what they can afford to pay. Okay. To pay the younger guys, you're close now. Mm -hmm. They wanted seven fifty, seven hundred fifty thousand. Right. I think they had seven hundred. Uh -huh. You could, they would take seven twenty-five. Uh -huh. But let's go to that, the one you want, the 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 the, the big money that each club have to put. You add the players ask for eighty or ninety million. I think uh -huh. the owners at thirty, twenty million. Right. Yeah, the, that's, that's you a got big the disparity. Big disparity. I think if they come up, if they go to 60, the players will take it and say it's a victory. Mm -hmm. And the owners still win because they didn't give up all the things that they're asking for. Right. You know, and I think you got to try and do a 10-year deal. Mm -hmm. So you won't come back in five years with this kind of problem. Again. Again. Do yeah. a 10-year deal. Make it good. Do a 10-year deal. All right. So. After you get up from the table, <clears throat> sitting down behind closed doors with the owners, and you just told them what you said to me. You walk out of the room, you're going down the hall, think you're going to your car, and a guy sticks his head out of, the, out of another room and says, hey, that's Coach Cato. Hey, Coach so-and-so. So you got a minute? So, well, yeah, I got a minute for you. We're good friends. You know, how's it going? How's the wife? How's the family? Blah, blah, blah. And after that, this guy, who's a player, says, got a bunch of the players in here in this room, and we're talking about the situation and where we are. Would you come in and, and speak to them? After talking with the owners, what would you then say to the players behind closed doors? I would say the same thing, that you have to give a little, uh -huh. to be able to win. Victory is not about winning today. It's about the long term. Yeah. You see, many people think winning the battle and not the war. Right. You, you're not going to win the war, but you got to win battles uh -huh. in order to win the war. In order to, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, so you, everybody's got to give a little, mm -hmm. you know, in order for victory to be had. And somebody's ego, can, they can go away with their ego intact. Right. You never want the owners to be mad with you forever. Uh -huh. And you don't want the players to be angry with the owners right. forever. Right. So you have to find a way that we can make things work. I just, you know, and a good friend of mine, and I talked with him, and he said, this thing could be abrasive at times uh -huh. because you know, nobody wanted to give. Yeah. And when you're talking that kind of money, yeah. emotions run high. Yes. Uh, and, and you many times will end up thinking – with your heart instead of thinking with your head. That's right. Yeah. What do you think the average fan thinks about all this? You hear, you hear these people talking about hundreds of millions of dollars for what essentially is playing a game, obviously at a much higher level than anybody else does. Yeah. But the average person dealing with COVID, unemployment, inflation, gas prices, crime, et cetera, et cetera. How do you think they're viewing what the players and the owners are doing right now? Well, you know, there are fans who can't understand why they would do that mm -hmm. to them. Right. They really can't understand it, and they, they are hurt by it right. because they're putting themselves in that position and say, I'm, I'm making enough money. Why would I want to? Try and get more. You know, right. that's what fans would think. Well, yeah. Yeah. But you're not that player. Uh -huh. And you're not the owners. Well, I'm not, I don't want to say player. You're not the players alum, the players bargaining right. people. Right. See, there are things involved that we can't even phantom yeah. what they're arguing yeah. about and trying uh -huh. to get. Uh -huh. And that's what makes it unique and special mm -hmm. because there are so many – all of this money is not going to go to the players, particular. Right. It's going to go into a fund uh -huh. that will fund the players when their career is over. Right. With. And that's what the major league players are fighting for, too, that they'll have money that will take care of the players with insurance and other things that arrive uh -huh. as they go forward. Knowing that we fans have watched this happen before, 
what kind of grace period cushion do the players and owners have before the average fan says, you know what, I'm through with all of them. I will not forget y'all. I got no problems in my household with my job, with COVID and everything else. To heck with y'all. How much longer can this go on before the fans just kick everybody to the curb? It'll go on as until you get a hot team come into town and you got the Mike Trout on the team and uh, or uh, or one of the top players right. coming in and they're playing well and your team is playing well. That's when they'll come all come back. Yeah, because they want to be a part of the event. Mm -hmm. So I think that there'll be some fans who are going to play hardball right. and maybe not come back. Uh -huh. But that's not going to be a People understand labor relation, labor dispute nowadays better than they did years ago uh -huh. when Marvin Miller was fighting. And people didn't understand because there was no labor fight. Ownership won no matter what. Right. It ain't going to happen anymore. Uh -huh. These people are going to fight to the end. And they're going to have to cave in to give something in order for the, the players to give in and give something back. How much of what we're watching with this whole scenario is a direct reflection of what we have become as a society? We're no longer willing to compromise. We're no longer willing to sit down and have an intelligent, meaningful discussion with somebody who doesn't think the way we do or wants a different outcome. How much of this is just a simple reflection of what we've become as a society? I think it is a lot of what we've become as a society. Mm -hmm. Nobody want to show weakness anymore. Right. Giving in is a sign of weakness, when in reality it's not. Uh -huh. It's a mean that says cooler head prevail right. when they see that we maybe need to yield to make sure for the good of the order. Yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. You have to make sure we can identify what is the what is determined or the definition of weakness and strength. Uh -huh. It's about making good business decisions. Yeah, yeah. Let's say worst case scenario actually happens. Season is canceled, or a huge portion of the season is wiped out. What will that do to the image of Major League Baseball? Well, it would literally devastate the industry. Mm -hmm. The owners ain't going to let that happen mm -hmm. because in by May is when they start making their money, okay? Right. Fans will be, kids uh -huh. will be out of school. Uh -huh. You have more people in the same. In ballpark, TV yeah. will kick in. Yeah. Advertising. The owners are not going to do that. Uh -huh. You know, but the industry could be damaged if it's perceived that it's all about money and not about the fans. Right. You know, it's you got to consider fans uh -huh. because they're the one that buy the tickets. Yeah. At the end of the day, I don't know to what degree casual fans these days understand labor relations more than we did X amount of years ago. You would like to think we understand it more because we've been through it on any number of occasions with the NFL. Uh, with referees, uh, with Major League Baseball before. All that being said, is the sport doing a good enough job in presenting it to the fans so that the fans are more willing to say, well, the owners got good points, players have good points, let's just calm down and wait and see how it all shakes out. Are they doing a good enough job of presenting this to the public to get the public on their side for a wait-and-see attitude? I think they had done a really good job before when nobody was talking to the media mm -hmm. because I think, you know, it's better to do it that way. Right. I want to also go back to another union that had a dispute with ownership, the United Auto Association. Auto, Auto Workers, yeah. Auto Workers Association. Boy, that was an ugly, a bitter fight. Just think, they had to fight. Mm -hmm. See, they had to fight for something that was now went down the road. Right. Because they had taken advantage of them all those years. Uh -huh. Remember, people are union busters. They didn't want unions to form. Right. 
They didn't want people to have rights. Uh-huh. And you listen, we want people to have the right to work if that's what they want. Right. But we can't let them do it at, at the expense of people who fought for a union. Uh-huh. <laughs> we can't let you come in and do that. Right. You go to those places that don't have union yeah. and you can work. But there are too many people gave their life up everything mm-hmm. for the for the right for protection. Right. And who benefits Clarence? It's usually the people down the road. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because of some of the things you and I do. You got me? Right. Right. Good points, coach. Yeah. As always. We'll get our halfway point break out of the way. When we come back, we'll shift gears and Talk a little Louisiana and uh, something that you might be tempted to say. They should have seen this one coming. <laughs> That's next when we come back with this week's edition of the Roger Cato Show. Stay with us. Uh. <laughs> Getting a letter from the IRS that you owe back taxes can be scary, but it doesn't have to be. Call Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040 today. We'll help stop garnishments, levies, and seizures immediately. With over 35 years of dealing directly with the IRS, our team of local professionals will help you pay the least amount possible. So if you owe back taxes to the IRS, you need help. Call the tax professionals at Go Tax Resolution in Lafayette at 337-420-1040. Your go-to tax relief. Hi, I'm Hurricane Betsy Barnes. And I'm Dr. Kay Siller with The Rocket Right Show. We are two busy blondes on the go showing off life in Louisiana. Watch us on Pelican Sports Network. And talk 107.3 FM. Check local listings for times. Hello, guys. It's Debbie. It's time. I've got a brand new location. 10510 Airline Highway, Baton Rouge, next to After Five Tuxedos. We have the perfect spot to get all your wedding and formal wear needs. Come see our one-of-a-kind name brand and get great prices. With 30 years experience, the best customer service anywhere. It's Debbie's Bridal, Airline Highway, Baton Rouge. See you soon. Smart Baton Rouge business travelers travel out of Baton Rouge because BTR is so close and convenient, they're always one step ahead rather than dead on their feet. So, isn't it about time you flew BTR? Baton Rouge Metro Airport. Have a passion? We've got the place. Gear up for where the rubber meets the mud. Or stir up memories of a lifetime. Reach new heights. Gravitate towards something out of this world. Even travel back in time. You might like a little drama in your life. Or get in touch with your inner nature lover. Release some pent-up energy while you're at it. There's plenty to do beyond the swing sets. Breck, we're more than a playground. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Roger Cato Show. Coach, let's shift gears uh, and locales from baseball to football, and up to North Louisiana. There were a lot of SWAC fans, a lot of Grambling State fans, and a lot of SWAC West fans that were really excited about Grambling State hiring Hugh Jackson to take over the program. Most folks believe that the guy has a solid head on his shoulders, has a good mind for the game, and a reasonable um, feeling for what mainstream America is feeling or thinking. He turns around and hires Art Bryles. Less than a week later, they let him go. Did Coach Jackson think this one all the way through, Coach? Well, they didn't let him go. He resigned. Well, he resigned. Yeah, Yeah. that's a little different. Yeah. Uh, Had he not resigned, do you think they would have just tried to weather well, he the storm? Well, his contract probably would not have been approved by the uh, by the board, Louisiana board uh-huh. that oversees Grambling. Right. Um, uh, I don't think that they they would have approved his contract. Uh-huh. And you know, that was a difficult situation uh-huh. because. 
Baylor and the NCAA, the NCAA in particular did not find any cause for him. Uh -huh. Baylor paid him. If there were cause, they didn't have to pay him the $15 million. Right. I think it was $15 million. I may be off, yeah, off I, of my I number. but. the numbers. But we know that there were 20 or 30 cases where rape took uh -huh. took place by football players. Right. And that he was, he did not make someone aware of. Uh -huh. That's what I'm reading. Right. Are you reading the same thing? Yeah, yeah. I've had that conversation with people. And it's a tough one. Uh -huh. Because the NCAA said, you okay, the coach. Correct. Correct. But. But. <laughs> but. Yeah. Society uh -huh. haven't approved of it. Uh -huh. They won't let when you rape so many women. Uh -huh. Oh, not he did. So many women were raped. Right. Right. You under just your can't watch. sweep that under the rug. That's why it's so difficult. It is amazing to me that this soon after the launching of the hashtag Me Too campaign, you had to know, Coach. <laughs> I mean, un, you would un, think he had un, to un, know. Unless you've been living on the moon or out in the desert, you had to know the potential backlash that was going to come from this. Yeah, I, they had to. They, they had, I don't know. They got something blinded them to see. See, let me tell you why they knew it shouldn't have been, couldn't have happened. Toronto, I'll allude, whatever the Toronto team, right. they let him go right. because of that. Uh -huh. Southern Miss let him go because of that. Why do you think it's going to work here? Why would you think I, they were going to let it go here? Uh -huh. Grambling is no different. It's no. not less than those two, those other two, two places. Right. They have women there, and we have they have rights. And we want to respect the women, uh -huh. and we just can't have that kind of stuff. His replacement. Oh, you have a replacement? Yeah, wide receiver coach John Simon has been elevated to the OC. But <laughs> there's a little problem there also. <laughs> John Simon resigned from the University of Memphis over... Title IX allegations in 2021. At what point do you stop digging because all you're doing is making the hole deeper? Is, is, it, is it that hard to find qualified people to come to a storied <laughs> program that weren't accused of covering something up, allowing sexual improprieties to happen, under their watch. You replace this guy who had this big old furor around him with another coach who, by the way, just a year ago resigned from another university because of some other allegations. If you're a board member, what are you thinking to yourself when all these contracts come before you for some approval? I got to ask you a question. Uh -huh. Did you apply for that job? <laughs> you didn't put your your name in for the offensive coordinator? Oh, no. Huh? Oh, no. Darn, Claire. You know, I think I'm going to put my name in. I couldn't in. do the Roger Cato show oh, if, oh, I, okay. if I did that. <laughs> Come on, yeah. coach. Oh, yeah, it's something. Uh, yeah, they, they got to be other people out there. There are other people out there. Yeah. It's just for some reason these people just got – or in that circle. Right. And you gotta probably widen your circle a little. Yeah. Yeah. And, and find other people because there are qualified people out there. How could somebody, how could other school hire qualified people and you can't? And you can't. Let's say for the sake of the conversation, this upcoming football season, Grambling goes undefeated, wins the conference championship, wins. The bowl game with the MEAC <laughs> wins the National Black College Championship. Oh, boy, you're going there. <laughs> will fans forget all about this? Some and, of them and, will. And if so, what does that say about us as a society? 
it says that we we accept some things that we shouldn't mm. for the glory of winning. winning as, as, as the late Al Davis said, just, just win, win, baby. baby. Just win, baby. And that's the way it is. What does that say about us? Well, it's, I mean, I wouldn't put too much stock in it because we couldn't stop it anyway. Could we? I mean, I wouldn't listen. It would be those people who decided that they're going to accept that. Right. You just try to associate with people who have a little higher standard. Yeah. You can't stop it, Clarence. Yeah. And we could talk about it, and it won't make a lot of difference. So my thing is, you would think that universities and the people who are in charge of these universities wouldn't allow this to take place. Right. That's I mean, all I can say. When you consider the number of females who will be sitting in the stands for any given game to support your school, <laughs> How can you expect them to show up and continue to support you and you're doing stuff like this? I mean, it, 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 it boggles the mind. And, and I've got to ask, what does your gut tell you? How widespread are Title IX abuses in college athletics? Well, I, I don't want to get into that because I don't know. Right. And it, would be, it won't be fair for me to assume Assumption we, I don't want to. Yeah, assume. we know about the assume. Yeah, yeah we I'm, know. I almost said it. We know. Yeah, <laughs> you know, but we know it's taking place. Right, and that we know that there are some people, it happened to, and they just don't go forward. Right, they just hasn't brought the case forward. Yeah, we do know it, and I, I read something interesting, that a lawyer said about women. Well, it might have been a psychiatrist. Okay, said that. Things that happen to women and they may not come forward with it uh -huh. right away. But as, they, as time goes along and they're able to process it, right. they may be more willing to come forward, and it may take years to do that. Right. So my point is, I say that to say that, there are a lot of females have been, who have been sexually abused, right. and they just didn't come forward. Uh -huh. And who is to say they won't come forward with some telling people about it years later? Yeah. Based upon what I read, and so it could happen. And, and a lot of it could be due in some instances to the fact that I was going to say something, but look how they treated this person. Exactly. No. They don't want to go forward and be humiliated. Yeah, ridiculed. You ridiculed and humiliated. So yeah. a lot of people yeah. take it. And no. they know that they may not get the support that they need. Yeah. Gut feeling. Who again? Again. <laughs> Is more of this due to men being men? Or is it more a case of power? I think it's a, a case of both. Uh -huh. Men are being men and those who who have not learned to have the level of respect they should toward women. They say, right. I'm a man, I can do this. Uh -huh. And there are some people who are in powerful position. Mm -hmm. And they say, I got the power, I can do what I want. What I want, yeah. You know, and yeah. those things exist. Uh -huh. I know them, you know them, I yeah. know about them. So, yeah, uh, yeah that, it's a little both uh -huh. where that does happen. And you know what, but women are making progress. Oh, yeah. They are making good progress in trying to, stamp out some of this kind of stuff. Uh -huh. I, uh, it, it's interesting you said that because I read, and you all, please forgive me because I, I, I can't remember exactly who to attribute it to. But a guy said recently, one of the amazing idiosyncrasies of this experience that we call life is that in many cases, people who aspire the most to have power are those the least able to use it the way God intended. That's right. I like the way you put that. Mm -hmm. People aspire to have power and they don't use it in the right way. Yeah. I don't want power. Nah. And people say I have it, but I don't want any power. Nah. 
you know, because I don't want to have nothing lording over people. Yeah. I want people to feel good about coming to me mm -hmm. and we can interact. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when people, you know, have power, they do the wrong thing, Clarence. Yeah. I mean, I've seen it all the time. And, and I've just said, it's a shame. Yeah. They could have used that for good. That's right. And we would have sort of like that crazy president in Russia. He could use his power for good. Yeah. And he won't. Yeah. Those who aspire the most to attain power, in many cases, are the least qualified to handle. That's right. Wow. Final break of today's show. We'll come back and wrap up this week's edition of the Roger Cador Show. Stay close. <laughs> Got termites? Get Premier Pest. PremierPestServices.com Looking to get some keys made, locks rekeyed, or a wide variety of new and used safe? Then look no further than the trusted choice of African Safe and Lock. Conveniently located off of Government Street in Mid-City, Baton Rouge. Trust the expert locksmith at Alfred for all of your residential, commercial, and industrial lock and safe needs. Trusted by Baton Rouge and me, Roger Kadar, to protect what is yours since 1946. Hey, Coach Roger Kador here. There's something about teamwork that brings the best out in any business. When I need a tow, I call Roadrunner Towing. Roadrunner's four generations strong and homegrown right here in Baton Rouge. Thanks, Coach. There's no job too large or too small. Call Roadrunner for quick, reliable, exceptional service. We don't want an arm and a leg. We just want your toes. And remember, take time each day to be a blessing to someone. Thank you. Cot spiders. Premier Pest Services. Welcome back to the final segment of today's edition of the Clarence <laughs> Blood Show. Tell my man, uh, Alan, out in the truck, you got to learn to talk louder, bro. Yeah. I mean, oh, he's counting to himself. Okay, I got it, I got it. Uh, not so long ago, Coach, the state of Louisiana finally got back to a degree of normalcy by having the opportunity to congregate with family and friends and celebrate the time-honored tradition of Mardi Gras here in South Louisiana. Uh, we were fortunate, the Pelican broadcasting crew, to be in the city of New Roads for the two parades there. And in between those two parades, you were honored by the place where you were born, given the key to the city, all of the, the luminaries are heaping praise upon you. What was that like for for old country boy from the island? Well, it was really a special honor because, you know, I'm from there, and uh, as people say, you know, it's uh, it's always good when you can go back home and Amen. people say, Amen. I appreciate what you have done. Uh -huh. And hopefully those things will make the people who are like, senior citizen proud, uh -huh. but more than anything, inspire the younger people yes. to go on and do better than me. Yeah. And that's really what it's all about. Uh -huh. If you could sit down and talk with individuals that are considering going into coaching, and they know you spent decades in the profession, what would you tell them are going to be the challenges they will face, and what would you tell them will be the greatest rewards they could expect? Well, the challenge is that things are different now, uh -huh. in that the parents have more input, more say-so, right. uh, or they want to have it. Let me yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they want to have it, and so you gotta, you gotta sort of be a politician, uh -huh. more, as a better as, politician. As, as, well as, as a coach. As well as a coach. Yeah. 
Well, yeah. I didn't have to play politics when I coach. Uh -huh. I just coach right. and do what I knew was right. Yeah. But now they're going to have to be a politician. They're going to have to make sure that they can get the community more involved mm -hmm. in what they're trying to accomplish. Yeah. I think that's important uh, for coaches who are coming, going to be coaches in the future. Right. Community involvement is critical because even though when I was growing up and when I was coaching, it was done differently. They were involved, but they were involved on a different, at a different angle. Okay. But I think right now the way things are, it's paramount that we get community involved. And then the other thing you you asked me, what was the the, the greatest the, reward you can expect? Is that you can take kids and me mesh them together and they become a team, mm -hmm. and they could say. I'm a part of a team that I will fight for this, my teammate, do anything it takes to try and win, mm -hmm. and represent their community in a positive manner. Even though all the members of the team may come from vastly different backgrounds, different skin colors, different religious affiliations, that's got to stand for something, Coach. It's got to stand. And let me tell you something, Clarence. <clears throat> Obama made a statement several years ago, and it just rent, hit me. He said, what is happening now? He said, that form kid in Kansas, uh -huh. listen to this. He said, that form kid in Kansas, the ones that are well-to-do are going to go to a private school. Uh -huh. The ones who are poor are going to go to the public school. Right. He said, the sad thing about that is that those two kids are never going to interact uh -huh. with each other. Unless it's for maybe for athletics. For athletics. Uh -huh. That's the only way they're going to interact, uh -huh. if they compete against each other. Yeah. But he said, and this is what is happening. We are separating the half from the half now. Uh -huh. When it's so important that they are able to mingle because kids don't know what they got and what they don't have. Yeah. They just want relationships. Shifting gears again. Kim Mulkey named yesterday by the Atlantic as the National Coach of the Year. That's a heck of a turnaround in one season. The, the biggest turnaround for an SEC coach in their first year in the history of the league. She's doing something right, Coach. The sad thing is they got people like you all. <laughs> you and Marty. <laughs> you all going to do Kim, they're going to want you to win it all next year, girl. Yeah, you next did year. coach of the year. Next year. This year? This year. Oh, my God. You're <laughs> not going to win it this year, Just probably. Kidding, Kim. I love you. Yeah, but you next year they're going to expect you to win it all. Yeah. And is that necessarily a bad thing? Well. <laughs> e e expecting, it, e expecting it is one thing. <laughs> but being unrealistic <laughs> if kids get hurt. Yeah. Uh, or, or whatever, you still expect it. Well, that's unrealistic. But is it, I, is it a bad thing to want your team? Uh, <laughs> I mean, ask the folks least, in Alabama. Yeah, I see how ask, you're trying ask, to put ask it. Ask Crimson Tide football fans. I see how you're trying expect, to wrap that baby. To it. <laughs> I see how you're trying to wrap. No, I think it's good. Expectation is really good. Uh -huh. Setting bars high for kids is yeah. a good thing. Yeah. You know, because, you know, you have to set a bar where you force a kid to get up there. Uh -huh. And they benefit from there. Oh, yeah. They benefit when you set bars uh -huh. high. Unfortunately, though, there are those in today's world that will tell you, you really shouldn't do that because if they don't reach the goal, you might damage them psychologically and this and that and the other. But the human experience, my humble, my, my humble opinion only, my life experience has been, if you set the bar low, that's what they're going to shoot for. Yeah. If you set it high, they're going to shoot for it. They may not reach it, but they will certainly be better off than they were with a low bar. Yeah. Listen, failure is always good. People don't understand how wonderful failure is. Yeah. You know, people always talk about win, 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 win. It's failure that makes you better. Uh-huh. That's why the A student who never make a B, when they make it, they fall apart. Yep. They have a nervous breakdown. Yeah. <laughs> you got me? Yeah. That C and D student never going to have no nervous breakdown. Yeah. They're reaching up there. That's right. So failure is such a wonderful thing 
that people don't talk about. Yeah. We fail more than we succeed any damn way. Uh, anyway. <laughs> and that's the truth. Yeah. That's, that's the God honest truth. I uh, Far be it from me to question anybody's motive, to question anybody's qualifications, or to question anybody's rationale. But it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way that Coach Kim Mulkey presided over the biggest turnaround of any first-year coach in the history of the SEC. She wins National Coach of the Year Award from the Atlantic but doesn't win it in the SEC. Is that just one of those things that you write off, that people are going to be people, you never know why they're going to vote the way they vote, and whatever happens, happens? You coming into I'm this league, Kimberly, <laughs> we ain't going to give it to you. Yeah. Yeah, no, I've had that happen to me, so I know. Yeah. I mean, uh, What goes you, through your mind when that happens? You just, you, you just write it off? You and write say, it well, off because, you know, they pretty much say we ain't going to give it to you this right. year. You right. know, they determine in their mind who the, right. they don't let the record determine who wins it. But don't you run the risk of diminishing the Clarence. validity of your award? Well, listen, it's been diminished by people all the time. Uh-huh. You know, people who vote right. and decide they, they weren't going to vote for the person who should win. Yeah. It, it yeah. happens all the time. So yeah. it's not, that's not no different. Yeah. She's got the big award. Let's take it. Let it go. And and next year when she wins the national championship, it'll all be a moot point. Anyway. It'll be moot. You, that's what you want. <laughs> it'll be a moot point anyway. We I are, figure you were getting there. Yeah, I'm getting there. If I stick around you long enough, it's going to rub off on yeah. me, Coach. It'll rub off. <laughs> we, uh, we neglected a couple of weeks ago to congratulate the Southern University Laboratory School's girls basketball team for winning the state championship. Their first state title since 2004. Not bad. Not bad. Con- 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 congratulations. And, and you know what's ironic about this? I guess there is validity to the statement, winning breeds winning. In 2004, when they won the state championship, the head coach right now, Kiana Cheney, she led that 2004 <laughs> team to the state championship. And now she come back home and get it again. Get it again. Isn't that beautiful? That's a wonderful thing, Coach. Yes. That is an absolutely wonderful thing. Congratulations uh, to the Lady Kittens on their state championship, the first in 18 years. And it just so happens the last time they won it, their coach right now was a member of that team. That's good stuff, y'all. Well, that's going to wrap up another week of the Roger Cador Show. On behalf of our entire crew, Jonathan Poche, who, by the way, happens to be your co-host of Tiger's Roar, Alan Trailer, we don't know what he does, floor producer extraordinaire Marty, he's the coach. I'm Clarence. We'll see you next week with another edition of the Roger Cador Show. <laughs>